Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and talk about something really fucking big that GGG just dropped last night for us. And that is the development manifesto, uh, essentially regarding energy shield and life. So let's go ahead and jump right on into this. So for players who don't know, energy shield has been the endgame alternative to pretty much 95% of all builds when it comes to endgame content. And the reason is actually explained in here, and we'll cover that, we'll read this together. Um, but essentially a quick TLDR, it's like, energy shields can scale much higher than life, and due to the fact that they don't need to run any life flasks, they have the ability to run an extra utility flask, which in the current flask meta can be, you know, 26% physical mitigation, an additional 40% movement speed, onslaught, uh, plus 6 to plus 7 max res. So these kind of really, really add to the whole like CI being OP. But anyway, let's cover this. We'll be making a large number of changes to energy shield and other defenses as part of the fall of Oriath beta. This manifesto aims to explain why we've decided to make changes to energy shield and what these changes will be. Now, one thing to note is this is still for the beta. So I am going to be on the uh, spe uh, skeptical side, but more of like a positive side and say there's still maybe more things that are going to be adjusted. Assumingly, because that's how a beta would work, you know, we play the game, we give them our feedback, and then they make more adjustments based on the feedback. So that is one thing to take note of. All right. The Chaos Inoc Inoculation Keystone let Energy Shield entirely replace life as the resource that made up a character's effective health pool, rather than just augmenting it. Because Energy Shield comes inherently on intelligence-based equipment and has multiple mods that increase the values from the equipment, we saw far greater growth in Energy Shield values from well-rolled items than we did life bonuses. So an example of this is a Legacy Combs Heart, which is probably one of the rarest items in the entire game. So let's not even use that as an example. Let's use a Combs Heart. Would give 500 flat health. A mediocre chess piece can roll 500 ES and will go for less than one chaos towards the end of the league. Whereas a Combs Heart would be multiple exalteds. Hundreds of chaos. This factor, as well as other factors like the increase to energy shield from intelligence and the power of the discipline aura, meant that very uh, meant that with very well rolled items, a player could achieve a colossal values of energy shield. We've seen characters reaching over 25k es while still having the damage output to sufficiently complete all the content in the game, compared to uh, compared with the 9,000 life that a very heavily invested life character with perfect items could reach. Now that's not 100% true. Explosive era builds could hit like 11 to 12k. Um, so could certain builds that are, seem, are basically themed around fire. But either way, it's still you know not even half the amount of what ES does uh, achieve. In addition, the Volpact, Ghost Reaver, and Zealot's Oath keystones could be used to compensate for any situation where the build found itself lacking, with a small exception of life flasks. Volpact basically says that Leech goes to energy shield. Sorry, Volpact makes it so Leech applies instantly. Ghost Reaver turns Leech into energy shield, does not work for life gain on hit, and Zealot's Oath converts life regeneration to ES regeneration. The combination of a huge effective health pool and complete access to recovery mechanics removed almost all of the challenge from the very toughest encounters in the game. To solve this problem, we've made some changes at certain points that reduce the power of energy shield at the very end of the game while undermining it at lower levels. Reductions to energy to levels of energy shield. All local energy shield modifiers and items, as well as the base energy shield of items, have been reduced at higher levels. Very low items, uh, low level items, will see a slight increase or no change, scaling up to a 33% reduction at the highest tier of modifiers. The reason why the low level ones did not get hit is because nobody really levels ES low level because you have too many factors to, to worry about. Getting shocked, getting frozen, getting bled, um, you know, all these, how do you get your ES back, you know, while you're in a boss fight that's going to take you two minutes, for example. Um, so that's kind of, they didn't, they didn't want to mess around with that. Because of armor slash energy shield and evasion energy shield equipment, we've also had to apply this change to the local percentage modifiers on all other types as well. To compensate, all inherent values of base armor and evasion rating on equipment are now greater at higher levels. We've also increased the defenses granted by all body equipment at higher levels by 20%. That's a pretty huge, that's pretty nice. The only problem is, is people still won't play armor uh, evasion unless you can get your life ridiculously high. 
These changes will not apply to already rolled modifiers, but will apply to existing base items. Rerolling with an old uh, value will update it to the new values. As a consequence, the energy shield values on many unique items have been updated. So shafts, for example, is the number one go-to chest piece for low life due to the fact that chaos damage does not bypass energy shield, so you can get away with using uh, chaos inoculation. You can see a perfectly rolled one goes from 448 to 351, assuming that 150% is the new highest value that you can get. <clears throat> We've also reduced the potential to increase energy shield from other sources. Now this, what I'm about to read, is probably one of my favorite parts that they did in this whole manifesto. Chaos inoculation no longer has a multiplier to energy shield on a notable behind the keystone, so it used to have 14% more ES, I believe, permanently. Elrion can no longer craft 5-20% to increased energy shield on rings. There are other mod changes as well mentioned below. Can you imagine if you could craft 20% life on your ring, on both rings, so you could have 40% increased life on both of your rings with like a 70 life roll, with like a 55 strength roll? That would be, ab it'd be insane, right? You'd get like, I don't even know, three to 4,000 uh, life from your rings. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, Discipline, actually wait, there are other crafted mod changes as well mentioned below. Discipline now provides a lower value of base energy shield up to 33% lower at level 20. However, it also provides 30% increased energy shield recharge rate. I think that's nice. I think adding a little bit of, of um, I guess something different to the Discipline gem is not necessarily too bad. After all these changes, players will still be able to reach significantly higher values of energy shield than life. Current estimates are that a build that balances offense and defense is well geared, uh, can reach around 15,000 energy shield. Alright, here's like the big kicker right now. Thankfully, hopefully this doesn't affect many of my builds, but this pretty much shits on part of the meta. Volpact, Ghost Reaver, and Zealot's Oath. These are the three keystones we talked about above. These keystones provide huge bonuses to cast inoculation, uh, play oh wait, cast inoculation players without much of a downside. In the beta, we'll be trying out some extreme changes to Volpact and Ghost Reaver. We'll be iterating on these changes during the beta. Volpact. This keystone will no longer affect energy shield in any way. It will only apply to life leached. This is because the higher effective health pool provided by energy shield trivialized some encounters where Volpact lets you restore all of your health pool in under a second if your damage was sufficient. Ghost Reaver. This keystone had a huge downside for characters specialized in both life and energy shield, as it could no longer leech any life, but had no penalty for pure energy shield chaos inoculation characters. Because of this, we've now added a multiplier to energy shield recharge rate to the keystone, so players will be trading recharge rate for leech. So I'm going to assume, and I could be wrong on this, but your energy shield heals much slower if you have Ghost Reaver, but you're allowed to leech to your ES now. I'm not 100% sure on this. If someone knows exactly, you could type it in the chat, but I'm, I'm guessing that's what it is. Because of this, we've now added a multiplier to energy shield recharge rate to the keystone, so players will be trading recharge rate for leech. Zealot's Oath. The keystone uh, currently has no changes to it, but we may be trying out changes during the beta. This is usually the type of uh, energy shield character that I play. This is a Zealot's Oath character. So, so far, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so far, the patch didn't fuck me over too bad. Uh, Mastercraft, we made some adjustments to Mastercrafting values. Most notably, local flat bonuses to Energy Shield now have a more powerful, higher tier modifier. The goal of this modifier is to make it easier to craft worthwhile Energy Shield items, making it easier to start using CI or hybrid life Energy Shield items. As mentioned above, you can no longer craft percentage energy shield on rings. We've greatly reduced the cost of this mod so that it's cheaper to place on amulets. So that's good. So you don't have to pay an exalted to craft it on an amulet. Hopefully it's going to be like, I don't know, five chaos or something. Here are the values of the new craftable mods available from Haku. So this actually goes up to 70 flat ES on a body armor and shield, which is actually pretty nice because this will allow you to craft basic gear to get into maps, you know? Like basic ES gear to get your character going to get into maps. You don't have to like hopefully scour PoE trade like crazy. Um, even crafting your own piece of gear shouldn't be too bad because you can see here, this is a 240 ES helmet with just a simple 86% roll. Like that's it. All right, new item modifiers. This one is pretty cool, so I'm excited to see how this works. 
We're also going to be adding a series of new modifiers to items and replacing what can be rolled on some hybrid uh, hybrid armor to, imp to both improve life values and to increase total defenses on hybrid armor. All armor will have a new prefix modifier that can be rolled on it that increases flat defenses, armor, evasion, or energy shield, and grants a small value uh, of added maximum life. So this gives up to 38 life, 96 to 120 armor, uh, or evasion, and up to 30 energy shield, only on a body armor. So below is a screenshot showing a body armor with both maximum life and the new armor uh, and maximum life modifier. So this one rolled up to 150 life because it rolled a life with a hybrid life here. You can see the armor value is right here. Um, although I feel that they should have shown this with like a percentage armor increase. Because if you have life prefix, life prefix, and armor prefix, you're not, I feel like it'd be better to get life prefix, life prefix, uh, prefix and like percentage armor prefix because you're getting a flat armor from the uh, hybrid roll. So I feel like they could have done a better job showcasing this, but it's, I mean, it's totally fine. I don't know if this is like super crazy though, because if you think about it, um, you can't roll this added life on gloves and shields, or is it saying you can only roll this one? So I'm not exactly sure. Because if you're if you're only gonna get like an extra 150 life throughout your all of your gear with like perfect mirror worthy gear, I mean that's like an extra what like 400 at max. So I don't know exactly like I don't know if this is their plan or if there's more to it. But uh, off the top of my head, and I could totally be retarded. This doesn't seem like enough life to like make that much of a difference to be honest. Um, so I mean we'll see exactly what happens. We'll be changing flat added defense mods on multi-defense armors as well. Previously an armor evasion shield item could roll both flat local armor and flat local maximum energy shield as separate mods. These pieces will only be able to roll a combined mod that has both of them at 75% of their value. This means that hybrid armors will have lower potential rating of individual defense but better total defense. We'll be keeping a close eye on this change during the beta as it grants a lower effective health pool for energy shield characters, but the new defenses may compensate for this when used uh, alongside other pure energy shield items. Now, this part also that I'm reading is kind of cool. Um, I actually have a build theory crafted sort of just based off this little paragraph here. We're also going to be adding a new series of suffix modifiers to rare body armors to give them something more rewarding. Body armors that grant evasion will be able to roll dodge chance. Body armors that grant armor will be able to roll additional physical damage reduction. And energy shield armors will be able to roll additional energy shield recharge rate. Now, we may be adding other interesting modifiers as subjects to item slots during the beta if this is successful. As you can see, there are lots of changes to energy shield as well as item defenses in general. We've gone for an approach that adjusts a wide variety of factors, so we're relying on the beta to give us time to evaluate how this affects different aspects of energy shield builds. We're looking forward to seeing how these changes evolve during the fall of Oriat development and beyond. So my biggest concern though, is I think this is really cool, right? Right here. Body armors that grant evasion will be able to roll additional dodge chance. Body armors that grant armor will be able to roll additional physical damage reduction. So basically if you're rolling hybrid pieces, uh, so like if you have hybrid ES or hybrid sorry, hybrid evasion ES or hybrid armor ES, you can get percent physical damage reduction on a, for example, maybe 450, 500 ES chest piece with maybe like 800 armor, which I think is really cool. Vice versa, you can also get dodge chance um, if you were to flip it over with uh, another hybrid, with like the evasion hybrid. My concern though is this doesn't fix anything with the proposed problem of elemental reflect. A lot of physical builds that go crit have to go vault packed because they kill themselves to reflect and then you can't play an armor based character because you need to dodge your own reflect. So this is still kind of like up in the air. I'm curious to see if they're going to address something like this. Uh, but anyway, you know, I'm still happy. I'm psyched to see some changes. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I do want to play a life based character in the beta to kind of see how it feels. Um, my original goal actually was I wanted to play life RF totems, so like chieftain RF totems. My opinion may have changed on it now. I may try something different just because of this. So before I end this video, I wanna show you guys an example of some items that I feel are going to be very strong in this current, I guess, beta slash meta 
unless they decide to change things. Uh, and of course, this is my opinion, so I could be 100% wrong. So let me go ahead and pull them over right now. So I'm going to start off with Iron Will, which is not a piece of gear, but it is a uh, it is a support gem slash... Is it a keystone? I don't know. If, no, it's a support gem. It's a support gem, or you can roll it on your gloves if you get Repentance, which is global. So Strength Damage Bonus applies to Spell Damage as well as for support and skills. So basically, you get an increase to Spell Damage based off of your Strength. Joffrey's Sanctuary gives you flat energy shield per 5 strength. So even though they nerf the base of Joffrey's, they increase the armor gain from Joffrey's. And they did not, according to this, they didn't, I don't believe they said uniques have been adjusted. They may have. But if this value is not removed or nerfed, if you go Iron Will with Joffrey's, you could still probably get like, what, maybe like a 650, 700 chest piece with proper gear. That should pretty much be like a T1 chess piece now um, at endgame. Except you can play it as hybrid, which I'm curious to see. Sintrek are unique boots because their, their local ES here doesn't exist. Sintrek are actually pure evasion boots. Uh, unless they changed it. I'm pretty sure they're pure evasion boots, but they have a huge ES roll, which you can see here. So this just literally rolls 160 flat ES, and then you would quality it up to 192. So I don't know if these have been removed or not, because so these would still be realistically one chaos boots that give like 170 to 190 uh, ES. And then the last one I want to go over is the Guardian subclass. Because the Guardian subclass has a buff called... Which one is it here? Uh, where's the mono one? Here we go. Radiant Faith. Grants maximum energy shield equal to 15% of your reserved mana. If you guys have followed any of my RF characters, you'll know I, I always do like a little bit of a hybrid setup with mana at the beginning because it's a lot cheaper. They have not addressed or adjusted or fuck addressed any of the mana scaling to energy shield. So unless they like completely gutted it, this should still be another way to play an energy shield based character and still hit the same values as a CI character, but hopefully with less investment because I don't believe they've touched any mana anywhere on the tree, which means this has not been changed at all. The only thing that would get affected by this is your flat ES gear, but guess what? You already have flat ES, so you don't have to worry too much about it. So you wanna scale percentage modifiers and they didn't say they adjusted any nodes on the tree, so there should still be like 6%. You should still have like the huge clusters with the exception of chaos inoculation. So Guardians should still be very, very strong if you play them mono-wise. Of course, this is all 100% speculation, and we'll see exactly what happens in the beta, which is coming, like, I'm guessing, actually in like a few weeks. Um, I know they have the, the date posted on their website. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys some information, you know, maybe start a little discussion in the comments down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and, and uh, subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. I'm sorry for like fumbling my speech. I literally woke up 17 minutes ago, uh, even though the video is 18 minutes long, Kappa. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful time. Take care, everybody.